Yeah. All right. So gather your things and uh, I wonder, I've had, some of you I think I've told, hey Danielle, welcome and Lemon and all the animals and everybody. Um, one of my all time favorite stories ever is not a myth actually, not about a god or a goddess, but it's about Beethoven. And um, probably some of you have heard me tell this story about Ode to Joy. And, um, but uh, today, actually, May 7th is the 200 year anniversary of the first time that Ode to Joy debuted when Beethoven finally showed it to the public. This is his life's work. So I wanted to share with you as we practice today, I'm going to share the story with you. And it's such a, such a beautiful story. You know, in Yin, we're always talking about not just in Yin, in life and yoga and everything talking about the possibility of welcoming everything, you know, the good and the bad, that you can't just shut off the hard stuff and try to push away what you don't want, because then you're going to push away everything. Hang on, we got a couple more people coming in. And it's only, hey, Lexi, welcome. So only when we welcome all of it that we can really have a, a truly fulfilling life, right? And so Beethoven's story, the story of Ode to Joy is a story about someone who went through such trauma, such tragedy, such difficulty, and then ended up out of that creating one of the most beautiful things, like most beautiful work of art that any human has ever made. And I didn't know this, this is really cool. We're talking about Ode to Joy, Beethoven's Ode to Joy. And did that Beethoven's Ode to Joy was actually the very kind of beginning of pop music. It was the first time ever that someone had put lyrics with music. Like, huh, I had no idea. How cool is that? <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to tell you the story as we go along. But for right now, you can go ahead and get situated. Take a seat. If a, a cross-legged seat works for you, great. If not, any other kind of seat is just fine. And as you find your seat, take a moment. Push my pillow away here. Take a moment to rock just a little bit from side to side. Doesn't even have to be major. Maybe it's even invisible. But just a little bit of feeling the weight on one sitting bone and then the other. And noticing that maybe there's kind of one side that you favor or it feels like you've been leaning in one direction today. And then see if you can settle in the center right between your sitting bones and just take a breath there, a great long inhale and a really slow exhale. Let it trail all the way out. Maybe it's the first time you did that today. Follow the breath all the way to the end. And then we'll rock a little bit forward and back and kind of the same thing as you rock forward and back just you know doesn't get doesn't have to be huge just a little tiny bit and you might notice have i been leaning kind of forward today or in my life you know am i in this sort of mode of, of constantly charging forward of leaning into my experiences or am i leaning away you know, maybe avoiding something or not wanting to be fully planted in my experiences. And so seeing if you can find the center there as you rock a little forward and back. And finding center and finding center in this way, in this bodily way, is also really helpful in finding center in our heart and mind. You know, when we work with the body, it has an effect on everything else. And so as you settle into your center, you might let the movement come to a quiet stop. Eyes can be open or closed as you wish. And then open, like fling open all the doors and windows of your senses. Smell, taste, touch, sound, all of it. Notice everything. Is there a taste in your mouth right now? Is there a scent in the air? What's the temperature of the air around you that touches your skin? The 
texture of your clothing. Sounds both far away and very close, maybe even sounds inside your own body. And then one more thing to center here is to drop into the very center of your physical heart for a moment. Can you feel your chest, front, back, and sides, the whole round planetary circumference, 360 degreeness of it? And maybe it'll help to rock a little bit side to side or forward and back or any which way to try to feel it. And then drop yourself right into the center of your heart space and see if you can find a feeling of settling again, of resting there, of the breath landing there, filling that space in all directions simultaneously. And imagine that space expanding that the breath can fill it and maybe it doesn't even stop at the border of your skin or your ribs. Maybe your physical heart space goes even beyond the outline of your own body. Can you breathe a few times long and slow, slow inhales, long exhales. Each one softening and expanding the field around your heart. The vibrational field, you know, the vibrational field, the electromagnetic field of your heart is way stronger than your brain even. Wild. It's so powerful. Maybe even imagine or perhaps really feel the sizzle, the vibration of your aliveness there in your chest. Let your next out breath be the longest one yet. And maybe even at the end of it, there's a tiny little pause, just a moment of emptiness. And holding this feeling of slow, quiet, empty, but still really vibrating and alive, shimmering. Let's slowly shimmer our way out to all fours. So we're gonna to come to hands and knees to begin. And take a few moments for yourself here. You can do some cat and cows or just truly whatever feels organic and helpful on your hands and knees to start bringing yourself even deeper into your body, into your tissues, into every swath of tissue every field in your landscape, water it with your breath, what needs attention, what feels maybe a little dry, parched, send your breath to it. And when you send your breath to it, your brain is responding. And it's also sending all kinds of wonderful things, hydration, hyaluronic acid to that part. So it, it literally is watering the field of that part of your body when you think about sending your breath there. So water whatever needs watering. Move what needs to be moved. And then we'll, uh, we'll take it into a sort of a, a melting heart, like a, sometimes it's called a quarter dog or a, a melting heart with the right arm bent underneath you. And so we're gonna fold the right arm kind of horizontally and then stretch the left one out long. And I'm resting my forehead on my forearm, but maybe you want some extra props under there. Right? If it feels like a lot, grab any amount of cushions, pillows, blocks to prop yourself up in any way. That's it. And it might take a moment to find your shape. You can wiggle around a little bit, ease your way in. Right? We're not forcing our way in, just a gentle hello. That's it, let your skin soften. 
Let your breath get slow and quiet again. And then feeling that heart space one more time, pour the breath into it. And as you exhale, let it get a little heavier in the direction of the ground, breathing a little earthiness into your physical heart space. And as you exhale, feel it sink and soften. So some of what I'm going to tell you tonight comes from um, what I remember from Susan Cain's book, Bittersweet, where she tells the story of Beethoven, but also today on the Marginalian, Maria Popova shared something about it. So I'm going to read some from her as well. So she calls Ode to Joy, the eternal masterwork of the supreme human art making meaning out of chaos and beauty out of sorrow, vast and eternal, transcending all of space-time, and at the same time compacting it into something so intimate and immediate that nothing seems to exist outside of it. Inside of its total drama, a total tranquility. Inside its revolt, an oasis of refuge. I love that. I feel like that's my body sometimes, <laughs> right? Can we find a clearing, an oasis of tranquility, no matter what the situation or circumstances of our life or the world in this moment, can we create a clearing to rest in? Take another breath, let it all the way out. And then from here, we're going to do a couple poses and then transition to the other side of them. But moving so slow, start to come out. You might go into a child's pose. Maybe your arms want to stretch out or maybe they want to slide down by your side. If it feels better to do something else here, please do that any way that it helps you to let that last pose become a memory, to feel the echo of it fade and get quiet and quiet until it's almost gone. So if you're newer to this class, just please know that everything is a suggestion and if you need more time in these in-between moments, you can always take more time. And if there's something calling you that your body just really wants to linger in, you can always stay. So if you're ready, we'll start to roll up. If you're still on your shins, you can roll right up to sit on your heels. I'm going to slide the feet, kind of sit off to the left and slide your feet over to the right. The right leg is going to go long and the left knee is bending. We're going to take a sideways half butterfly here. And so here's where you might want a prop pillow block, something. I like to lean my elbow on a prop here. I'm going to wrap the other arm. So right arm is down by the ground or on a pillow. Left arm is going to just kind of drape in the easiest way behind my back. And then as I bend sideways just enough, I'm letting my right ear fall towards my right shoulder. And so this is the way I come into it, but if you want to change it, of course you can. You might put your hand or elbow on the ground instead of a prop. You might move this top arm somewhere else. If it's not serving you behind your back, that's it. And just enough, right? Not to overwhelm the body, but just enough to start feeling that beautiful, subtle opening. Let your whole outer body get quiet again. 
Let your breath get slow again. So Beethoven was sort of this tragic, troubled character. His life was marked by so much sadness. No one he loved. I've read this so many places, this poor man. No one he loved ever loved him back. They always say that as all of his love was unrequited. Poor guy, I think because he was particularly cantankerous and tended to wear like old moth-eaten clothes and look um, a little bit terrifying. <laughs> And, um, you know, he just, not only that, he had difficulty with his family, he was estranged from one brother, he was in a weird custody battle over his nephew with another one, and then he got this strange illness for a very long time, he was bedridden for years, actually, uh, he had headaches constantly, and then his hearing went. Right? And little by little, this man whose whole life was based on music and, and hearing music started to lose the ability to hear that music, except for inside. So is there anywhere in your body that might soften just a little bit more here? Any sort of habitual tension, any gripping shoulders? hands, belly, another breath nice and long and slow follow it all the way to the end find that little pause and then even slower than you went in let the exit of the shape be so slow your tissues have been stressed stressed in the most lovely way you might feel extra vulnerable right now so go carefully yeah, feel what you feel as you come up. Let's not miss this moment. Mm. If you need some movement here, take some movement. Maybe you want a windshield wiper your legs a bit, or maybe it's nice just to sit and be still and feel every little sensation, right? opening all the doors and windows of your senses again. Feel the life that's here, all of it. So a couple of options for the next one. So we had the right leg stretched out in our last pose. You might take that right leg and cross it in front of the left one, like a, a simple Sukhasana. Or if you wanted to, you might take a square pose where you put your right foot somewhere around the top of your left knee and come into the shape. And you can always pad some things, blankets and whatnot underneath your top knee if you want to. But if that feels stressful, we're not going for, um, you know, we don't want the body to react in a bad way. We want it to be really gentle. And so if it's too much, just do crisscross. Either way is great. And then melting over your legs. Let's take a forward fold. Here too, you might have props in front of you if you want something to lean on. So going for a, a very rounded spine in this forward fold, a soft, heavy head, easy jaw. Maybe the tongue loosens from the top of the mouth and the cheeks relax. Draping over your legs.
settling into this body. Notice any sensation, any places of pressure, warmth, vibration. Allowing the dance of sensation to live through you. So dreaming of turning the poem Ode to Joy into a symphony one day in 1822, Beethoven put on his ratty old moth-eaten coat and set out for a walk for what he thought was going to be a, a short morning walk in the city. As walking has always been the way, it's always been the way that he solved his problems and you know, figured out things creatively. And um, he walked, he got into a, a flow state, right? Maybe back then they didn't have that term for it, but he lost all sense of time, all sense of where he was in space. And he walked and he walked and he walked and he walked, <laughs> hatless and absorbed, not realizing that he was growing fatigued, he was growing famished until late in the day, he was completely disoriented, wandered into a totally different town and was arrested by the police for acting weird. <laughs> and he tried to explain to them, no, I'm, I'm Beethoven, I'm this very famous, he was very famous composer, but he looked so nutty, so disheveled that they didn't believe him and they threw him in jail. And uh, finally, you know, he raged and raged and screamed at them until eventually in the middle of the night, they dispatched an officer to go wake up a local music director who identified Beethoven, <laughs> instant recognition, <laughs> apologies all around, immediate release, more rage, more apologies. <laughs> so lots happened on the way to Ode to Joy. And uh, so for two years after that, he continued to work on the symphony, trying to channel his own poetic pain and fury into beauty, into meaning, how to turn darkness and suffering into something shining and brilliant and incandescent. Let all your tissues settle into deep rest for a few more moments here, nothing to do, no weight to carry, nothing to manage or figure out. Let muscles slip right off the bones. Don't forget 
carried by a thought, try to notice the difference between the virtual reality of a thought and this living, vibrant reality of sensation that's here right now. And gently returning, pouring your way back up, feeling the space around you as you rise. And here too, we're going to take all of those shapes again on the other side. But before we do that, a little interlude of any kind of movement or rest. You want to just sit in a meditative way, or if you want to lie down and take a mini shavasana, you could, or if there's some movement that you want, yeah, windshield wipers, always, always the favorite, anything at all, take a few moments and just let everything you've done resonate in you, let your tissues soak it in, let your bones absorb it. Let your organs respond. So Beethoven's working on this symphony and he's sort of like little by little becoming unhinged in a certain way, or at least it seems that way to people. And he can't decide he's going to hold the concert in Berlin. No, he's going to hold it in Vienna and he's going to do this. And he books a place and then he cancels it. And then finally, it's the end of concert season. This is 1824. And he's got like days left to, to, to debut if he's going to do it. And he cancels the concert again. And at the last minute, he says, okay, we're going to have it. So poor, I mean, you could just feel the torture in the story. So let's uh, come on to all fours. You got time, no rush, move like a, a big, soft mama cow through the meadow, all fours, hands and knees. If you want to shake your spine around a little bit, go for it. You know where we're going now. It's going to be that uh, melting heart, the quarter dog with the left arm folded and the right arm stretched. Right, little puppy here, melting heart. You can gather props if you need them. And take your time. When you're ready, you can move into the shape in a very tender way. So Beethoven finally decides on a location for this concert. And, um, and then at the last minute, he tells them that he's going to conduct it, which is a rare thing. Usually they have a conductor for these things. The composer doesn't do the conducting, but he insists. And, um, and so they tell the composer, so they're going to have a composer or a Beethoven and a conductor. And uh, the conductor tells the all of the orchestra, don't look at Beethoven, just look at me, because he's crazy. Uh, but he gets on stage anyway in his old moth-eaten coat, his wild hair. He's like six foot three years old. He's gigantic, he's enormously tall. And uh, he picked this orchestra and these singers. It, it dwarfed any orchestra that had ever been before. Dozens and dozens of violins, dozens of wind, dozens of cellos. I mean, more instruments than anyone had ever seen. And uh, he gets on stage with them. And by the way, this is the uh, harshest peak of winters when this happened. And finally, 
I'm sorry, May. So the, the started in winter and finally in May, finally in May, it's time, May 7th, <laughs> today. It's time for the performance. And this was really kind of going to make or break him, you know, and this bid for creation was demanding that he conduct the symphony himself. Everyone knew he was deaf. Now they feared he was completely demented. Oh, and they had only two rehearsals, which were absolutely catastrophic. <laughs> the soloist said that their parts were impossible to sing. The main soloist, she called him a tyrant over her vocal organs. One of the other soloists quit. I mean, just, you just everything so dramatic and chaotic. And somehow the show went on. Can you let all the tissues around your physical heart soften? Can you feel the weight of the fabric of your heart? Can the fabric of your heart unfold, be less like felt and more like silk. Imagine each fiber, each strand of tissue in your heart loosening from the one next to it. So on May 7th, 200 years ago today, at right about this time, early evening, Beethoven walked onto that grand stage and faced the orchestra, he raised his arms, and it began. And as soon as the music started, there was this shift. It was total, it was exalted, it was sublime, and I'm gonna, read to you from Maria Popova here, but first you can extricate yourself from this back bend gently, either pouring back into a child's pose or rising up to sit on your feet or whatever feels like a good way to find relief after that last pose. she says, despite the imperfections of a performance built on such tension, something shifted as soon as the music started, subsuming every body and every soul in a harmonious transcendence. After the final chord of Ode to Joy resounded, the gasping silence broke into a scream of applause. People leapt to their feet, waved their handkerchiefs, crying and chanting his name. You can go ahead and make your way up to sit. You're gonna slide the hips to the right, feet off to the left and stretch your left leg out nice and long. Gather your cushions or blocks, pillows if you need them to take a side bend over the left leg, the right arm, possibly draping behind the back. Feels okay for your neck, near to shoulder, finding a place that's sustainable for you. And any amount of props, and it doesn't have to look exactly like it did on the other side. Looks like what it looks like. And smooth out your breathing. And as you smooth out your breathing, imagining your Fabric also smoothing out every fiber inside you, every swath of tissue smoothing out. Oh. 
So as the symphony finishes and everyone rises screaming and crying and yelling his name, he has no idea because he's deaf and he's facing the orchestra, not the audience. And he actually is still kind of waving his arms because he doesn't even quite know that it's over yet. Can you imagine that? And then finally, one of the soloists grabs his arm and turns him around so he can see the audience. And I'm sure you can imagine his face in that moment, right? The elation that must have washed over his face in that sublime moment of triumph, of beauty, making beauty out of pain. And as soon as he faced the audience, the entire mass erupted with not one, not two, not three, but four volcanic bursts of applause until the police had to yell everyone into silence. They were still, this was like, you know, French revolutionary times. And, you know, they didn't want people being too crazy. <laughs> but it was clear that Ode to Joy was a masterpiece. And it was a call to all people everywhere to discard, this is from Maria Popova, she says, a call to humanity to discard all the false gods that fueled unremitting wars and inequality and to band together in universal sympathy and solidarity. Mm. And I'll read one last thing to you here. She says, this is Maria again. I suspect this was Beethoven's sacred point. The reason he never gave up, even as he lived through nightmares. This unassailable insistence that all the Napoleons and the Putins of the world will rise to power again and again. They'll also fall. Because there's something in us more powerful as long as we continue placing freedom, justice, love, and happiness at the center of our commitment to life, even as we live through nightmares. Mm. Go ahead and slowly come on up. Feel the moment you arrive. Feel the after pose, the delicate, vulnerable vibration. You've got some time if you want to move a little bit or just stay and feel. Try to keep all the doors and windows of your senses open. What do you smell? What do you taste? What do you hear? When you're ready, no rush at all. Just letting you know where we're going. It's either going to be this simple cross-legged left shin in front shape or left foot on top of right knee for square. Any props that you want to have under the top knee in front of you, under your seat. I think you've got some time here, so take as long as you need to snuggle in, to wobble around, to feel into what's the most organic place for your skeleton to rest here. That's it. You can fold forward. You can let your head drape if that feels okay. not pushing anything away here. If there's discomfort, not going to push it away. Are we going to say hello? Make a little room for it. Maybe even lean into it a little bit. Get a little friendlier with it. If something feels really good. Lean into that too.
the more we feel, right? Let yourself feel every little sensation, every bit of pressure, of stretch, of warmth, of coolness. The more we feel the texture, the color of life, the more we know beauty, the more depth we have. Walt Whitman said, those who reach sunny expanses and sky reaching heights are also apt to dwell on the bare spots and darkness. Virginia Woolf, another kind of tortured person, she called it the shock receiving capacity necessary for being an artist, or I might say necessary for being a human. <laughs> right? The shock receiving capacity necessary for being a human, the willingness to see the totality of life and all its grief and glory, beauty and brutality, Let the breath just fall right out of you. As you exhale, can the breath fall out of your skin, fall out of your bones in a way that helps you settle even more deeply. And go ahead and make your way back out of the shape, slowly rolling up through your spine if you're not there already. As you come up to the top, take a breath and let your shoulders settle, your face soften. Mm. Head on to, actually, we're going to take a caterpillar in a moment, but first it might be nice to just let your legs breathe. After all that folding, maybe you wanna stretch them out and give them a little shake, or maybe you wanna keep the knees a little bent and windshield wipers some more. Sometimes between in shapes, I just wanna lay there for a good 30 to 60 seconds, so if you're called to do that, you could imagine everything free flowing, all the energy, all the blood and fluids flowing through every channel, unimpeded, joyfully, an ode to joy inside your own skin. And as always, we're not in any urgent hurry to get there. You can meander in your own time, lovingly meander into a caterpillar, which is the long leg 
forward bend. As we do yin style, we do these forward bends, usually with a very rounded spine and a heavy head. If you want to stack some props, blocks, or pillows under your head or arms, you definitely could, or even a bolster or pillow over the legs. It could be nice to lay on, so finding your way into a simple seated long leg forward fold. Air out the back of the heart here. We've done the front and the sides quite a bit. But let's get the back. Soft, heavy head, easy jaw. You let some weight fall off your shoulders here. Let your arms get heavier and softer, easy elbows. Wrists, fingers like water. Feel your feet, the soles of the feet, tops of the feet. Little ten toes, even the spaces, little tiny spaces between the toes. Feel your feet from the inside, the hum, the aliveness of your feet. soft, heavy creatures of your legs. Just look to see if there's any clenching or holding that's unnecessary. Let your legs be like two giant swaths of fabric, just loosening in the direction of the ground. What's willing to unwind, to unbraid, unravel right now? Anything, anywhere.
Make your way slowly back up, roll up through the bones of your spine, feel its graceful architecture as you rise. Feel your crown floating like a cloud on top. And we're gonna finish with a supine twist. So if you need a little time to absorb Caterpillar, let it sink in, sit, or move, or rest. And then we've got just enough time for a twist on each side, lying down on your back. You wanna have a pillow or a prop to stick underneath a knee, you could. Doesn't matter which side, we're gonna do both sides. So you might take one knee over to a pillow. Arms can go anywhere that feels good to you. If you don't want a prop, no problem. You could always twine your legs to give a little more sensation to the shape. But just be mindful not to go overboard with it. We only wanna stay at like 70%, never max sensation here. You wanna be able to still be in the realm of the subtle. So find your twist and let your skeleton settle, let your bones exhale and become really earthy. Invite earthiness right into the marrow of your bones and let them sink. Imagine any tension emptying from your joints as if you could open up your joints like opening a, a canal lock or a window and just let any tension flow right out of your joints. that you could probably stay here most of the night, but I wanna make sure we have time for both sides. So in the most gentle way, start to bring it back to center and have a little moment in between either a quiet body or maybe a little wobble around. And then in your own good time, We'll take the same pose to the other side. Got all the time you need here. And just to drop this question into your heart, mind, body. What do you long for? And the answer might come or it might not. It doesn't have to. It could just be a feeling. It could be a word. What do your bones long for? What does your heart long for?
You know, if everything was perfect and we had everything we wanted, we wouldn't have any longing. Right? But in fact, it's that longing that leads to the creation of symphonies. <laughs> the longing, it's because of longing that we play sonatas or build rockets to Mars. It's because of longing that Romeo loved Juliet and Shakespeare wrote the story and it's still performed centuries later. There's a minute to rest here at the end. You can stay in your twist if you need more time, but we've got just a, about two minutes till the end of class. And so if you want to give yourself a little shavasana, you can fall onto your back and let your body sink into the earth. Let every muscle release from every bone. Let every organ become earthier and sink towards the ground. Let every bone sigh and let go. Please feel free to stay and rest for as long as you want. If you'd like to come back, you can begin a tiny bit of movement, a blink, a wiggle, or a stretch, calling yourself back home into your skin and bones, opening up all the windows of your senses again. And slowly climbing back up to sit where you could rest your hands wherever it feels supportive and easy on the body somewhere. Throwing a prayer at your heart. Your heart with all its beautiful longings. Life with all its imperfections like all of ours. And then all of that is the fuel for beauty. So let's take a breath in deep and wide and round. Oh. Finish with a bow. Thank you all so much. Lord